YouTube, Lenny Slide, over a training compound here in Gilbert, Illinois. Guess what we got for you today? Part four. Detention Aikido Rondori. Told you guys on the last video that this video was coming. So, here we go. This is bringing all together. We're not going to show a lot of hand deflection in this, which is your taste of Aki. Um, refer back to Rondori part one to watch what goes on in that video so you have an idea how to use your hand deflections and whatnot within the course of the Rondori. This video is basically showing how to throw using all four of the Nage Waza. Kokyu Nage, Sumitoshi, Osei Nage, and Rosiage, and how to set up for that. Usually this works really well with three people, with a three people, three person Rondori, but we're doing it with two for good reason. When you have three people involved in a video doing this style of Rondori, it's gonna move very, very fast. Because when you throw one, you got two more coming at you. You throw another one, the one last guy that you just thrown, he's getting up, joining forces with the other guy. So you're constantly having two people come at you as you're dealing with the third person. So we cut it down to a two-person Rondori instead of having a three-person Rondori for this video. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, we're going to be doing a 10 plus video on Rondori itself, which will be available in our uh, Tension Aikido platform on our website, www.roadwarriorstraining.com. Click on online classes or slides online classes, and you'll be able to see that upgrade of training within our store. It's not available right now, but it's coming soon. We're going to do a very extensive video series on that ranging from the Daiashi, which is the initial movement, all the way through the Rondori, and more than likely probably finalizing or conclusion with a beatdown Rondori, so you'll see what Smear the Queer looks like without the ball. That is pretty brutal. Um, it's going to take, take some time to film this, but when it's done, it's going to be awesome. And like I also said in the last video, part three, we're going to have some historical footage from the past 10 years that we're gonna add into that to where you're gonna see how that was 10 years ago versus the way how I'm teaching it now, the way how I'm doing it now. So we got a lot of stuff coming up. We have a lot of stuff coming up. Um, we got some other series that we're gonna be doing, some other upgrades for Detention Aikido, as well as uh, the combative concepts on our, on our online store with the online classes. So you guys might wanna keep an eye on that. Check it out. We'll be uh, posting uh, videos and whatnot and, and updates on social media for you guys that like our Facebook page, uh, Plenty Sly Road Warriors or Road Warrior uh, Combative Concepts, those two Facebook pages, like, share that stuff, you know, obviously this channel, subscribe to our channel because then you'll get notification of new videos that come up. So with that being said, we're going to go right into this and we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how to use Kokunage, Sumitoshi, Osei Nage, in Roskiage within a Rondori attack. So, I have Chris Luper here and Bob Kanka. Hi, you got to us? So, this is all based off of Ryo Katadori, which is a shoulder grab. Okay, so, hi. So, as you're coming up, you can use your taste sabaki, your hand deflections here. So, as they're coming, you can cut one person to the outside, the other person to the outside. Normally, when you start off in a Dayashi with Rondori, the Dayashi is the initial movement. So, as they're coming at you, you're moving forward, but you're moving in a triangle movement. This would be very difficult to do if they were coming at you and you tried to throw somebody, especially if you're here. I'm being urlacked at that point. There's no way I'm gonna survive this. So the best thing for me to do is to cut to the outside. And then whoever turns around first gets it. So as Chris is coming, boom. I might do Kokunage first to get these guys out of the way. Then I might move forward and do Norosiage. Now one thing with this, well, just stay right there, guys. You want to line up your ducks in a row. If I was to move this way with Bob, with Kokunage, and Chris is moving very fast, I'm going to have a hard time negotiating this attack. So, so as he comes in, I might want to use a hand deflection, an evasion, to get away. Notice how Chris turned around really quickly. Bob is still lagging. At this point, am I going to want to move to Chris's right side? Again, just like the last technique we did. So they come in. I move this way. 
there's a good chance I'm taking a hand in the face by Bob unless I can get off another hand of flexion again to get away from that. Then I'm going to have to gain some space, some distance. The one thing that you don't want to do, guys, don't move. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to start backing up and making them chase you. Reason being is, believe it or not, every one of us, and these guys can agree, at one point or another, we've tripped on this fucking thing. The last thing you want to do in a Rondori is take yourself to the ground because you're trying to back away to gain distance by doing this, and all of a sudden you trip and you fall. These guys, there it is. There's the pile-up. They're going to they're gonna jump on you. They're going to hold you down on the ground. You're going to have a hard time getting up. So taking a step back is okay, but if you're in this position, you don't want to start making them chase you. You don't want to gain too much distance. A, this is a training to better your Rondori with handling those throws. If you start making a lot of distance, you're going to piss off your root gates because now they're running halfway across the fucking mat to try to get to you. The idea is attack the attackers. Right? So as they're coming in, you want to be able to attack this. Boom! Attack! Attack! Right? You're moving in. Attack! Attacking the attackers. Notice how I'm not. Woohoo! I'm not all the way over here. I'm able to sit there and negotiate as they come in. I'm able to handle them one on one. If I if I do that, obviously you want to use your mat space. But if you're new to this, use a lot of your mat space. Otherwise, you get winded like how I am. They are. This takes a beating. You take, this, this, will, this will give you a beating doing this. See, it's, it sucks being out of breath. You know, and I have no problem with I'm a smoker. Okay, so the hard part about this, funny thing is, here's a new slide for all you guys. All three of us are smokers. You know, <laughs> it just is what it is. But with this type of training, this is huge cardio training. This takes a lot out of you. But, when you're new to this and you're learning it, absolutely, use your mat space. Use it wisely and use your mat space. When you get really good at this, shrink down the mat space. Use less and less mat space as you're doing this. Okay, so one more time. So if we use smaller mat space and they come in, one, right? Two, three, four. Okay, so I'm moving this. Now you can start adding throws to this movement. Notice how my bad face is small. I'm negotiating, I'm negotiating. Boom, oh. boom, oh, good. I'm watching the movements. Now it gets smaller, but notice how it got bigger at the end? It's tight, because I'm using the hand deflection movements. Then, the throwing gets involved, and it stayed small. See how I was cutting through the middle? Don't do that, often. I'm using a beat down on Dory. That's when, if I cut through the middle of this, here, that's when he grabs me and takes me down on the ground. Especially if I can't make the cut fast enough. So if he's coming in, I think I'm gonna do this. I might have cut him, but I don't have him. Might have cut Chris, but I don't have Bob. If I was to do that, it'd be a little bit more direct. Oh, cutting through, no, no, no. Come through. So, come through, then move through. I don't recommend it though, because it's hard. It's very hard, and it's putting you in the line of fire to get taken down. So keep that in mind when you're doing the Rondori that crossing through in between your ukes, not a wise thing. There's a good chance you're gonna get caught up and you're gonna get taken down. But with the throwing aspect, just like I described with the Rondori at the square, stay to the outside of the four corners. 
but shrink down your box. You know, one thing that I keto people don't do really well, <clears throat> with my experience with Rondori, is they don't go to the outside. It's almost monkey in the middle. Okay, Bob can vouch for me on this. We've seen a lot of traditional Aikikai style Rondori. That is more about movement, moving in and out of your ukes and whatnot. It's good for training, it's good for movement, but in the reality of actually doing throws and whatnot, you're gonna have a really hard time pulling stuff off. It's gonna be very difficult because in traditional Aikikai, you got guys doing the showman strikes, the cheap shot showman strikes, you know, this back of your head, where that's, I don't see the value in that. The grabbing is what I see the value in. That's what we do. That's what Taka Sensei does, Matsuoka Sensei, Larry Reynosa, Jaime Calderon, okay? <clears throat> One of my former teachers who was probably the best tension Aikido instructor that I did learn from, but I wasn't with him for a long period of time, George Angulo Sensei. That guy's Rondori was awesome. I learned way more from him on Rondori than I did from Larry Reynosa when I trained with Larry Reynosa for a while. <clears throat> it is what it is. So the majority of my Rondori training, the basic fundamental skills that Daiashi came from Angulo Sensei. Okay, he and I are still in contact today. We're still really good friends. You know, <clears throat> he's a little bit out of the Aikido game. He owns a business in Miami, Florida. So we've been talking a lot lately too. So it's, it's a good thing, but I just wanted to make sure that I gave him credit for this because it's definitely deserved. It definitely is. Reynoso was more of a, of a bully with the Rondori. You know, the Ose Nage technique, when you were done with that, you felt like your arm was broke. I mean, he would deliberately pound on your arm. Now, the Ose Nage is a hard technique, but taking that blow deliberately, his, his purpose of it was to smash your arm to where you didn't want to grab him again. I get it. But in the training aspect, you got to still have some compassion for your partners. You can't beat the shit out of them all day long with that particular throw. Because then all the other attacks become weak. Then your Rondori falls apart because now, what did you just take out of the game? The honest attack. Who's going to want to attack you when you feel like you have tendonitis to the elbow after about five minutes of that? That shit is brutal. So the Ose Nage, you don't want to pound on your, on your ukes. There has to be life with the attack, but you just can't beat the shit out of somebody's arm with that. It just, over the course of a training of one class of Rondori, your arm is, you're, you're not going to want to continue. It's, it's pretty brutal. But with that being said, it's, you know, with this style of Rondori, Staying to the outside corners is really where you want to be. That is key. It is essential that you do that. If you're weaving in and out, you know, like you're Walter, you know, Walter Payton running for a touchdown going through the Green Bay Packers fucking defensive line, you're going to get caught up. You're going to get caught up. And if you did it with us, you're going to get Erlacher to the ground and you're not going to be able to get back up. Okay? And... To add this to the mix of things, for all you guys out there that are going to watch this video on YouTube, okay, which I greatly appreciate, okay, notice my change in attitude. There was a reason why I was that dickhead in all those past videos. And I'm sure you guys can figure out the reason why. Those days are long gone. That's not me. There was an alter ego that I played because of the direction that those videos were going and who was the one that was inspiring me to be like that. This is how I really am. I'm not that angry, psychotic, batshit crazy guy. That's not me. Again, alter ego. So, you're gonna see a lot, a lot more videos in the near future because I'm back on this channel live, as you can see. You're going to see better content. You're going to see better instruction. Okay? You're going to see that hot chick, the blonde hair. She's going to be back in those videos. That's Dana. She's going to be in those videos. We're going to be doing some uh, 
revised version of a couple of revised versions of a couple videos. We're going to be making new versions of them. Those are going to be really good as well. I'm not going to give it away. Um, the Aikido past, present, and future videos. Those will be back. I still have a ton of those videos that I want to film. So we're bringing back that platform as well. So you're going to see a lot more stuff starting next month. I'm going to start working pretty hard on a lot of this. I'm going to have a lot of free time to be able to do that too. So it's going to be a lot of new things coming your way. Um, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention. I can't remember what it was now. Anyways, it's pretty much about it. You know, again, the idea of staying in the four corners, outside four corners of the Rondo is where you want to be. That's the best place for you. You don't want to get caught up with the grab. You don't want to, you don't want to get grabbed. You definitely want to stay away from that. The one thing I remember what I want to say. For all you guys out there who are going to watch this video, let me take a couple steps back, and you're going to criticize and make comments and say, this is bullshit, that doesn't work, that this, whatever. You have compliant partners, blah, blah, blah. You know what? You're right. You're right, guys. I do have compliant partners because it's the only way I can demonstrate this is by having people being compliant within the technique to be able to demonstrate the technique for you, okay? The Ron Dory Beatdown is the video that you have no compliant partners. There is a reason why Aikido is taught this way. There is a reason why people take Ukemi, okay? To avoid getting a wrist broke, a finger broke, an elbow dislocation, ending up wearing a C collar from taking the Riminage throw across the neck, Okay, there's a lot of substance behind compliant partners with teaching people how to do Aikido technique. There's a massive amount. You guys out there that comment, I don't think you guys truly understand what it takes to be able to do this. Okay, I've talked about the fast pitch baseball thing. If you've never played baseball before in your life and you stand at home plate and you've got a pitcher that's throwing fast pitch baseball, throwing fast pitch baseball at you and you've never played baseball before in your life, you're going to shit a dump truck full of diamonds when that ball comes at you at 100 miles an hour. You're going to be scared shitless. You're not going to be able to do it. The only way that you can learn how to do this is with compliant partners. This is the fundamental stage of this. In order for you to get good, you have to learn the fundamental stage. Are you going to use it like this on the street? Probably not. You're going to use the principles of cutting the angles and whatnot. You're going to throw you know, a temi, strikes, kicks, whatnot within the situation. Are you going to be throwing people around left and right and cutting them and you know all this, all this jazz? Probably not. This is an Aikido training platform video for people that do Aikido. That's what it is. The tension form of Rondori is very applicable in the real world. But this is where it's applicable. If you can handle... Three people at a beat down Rondori, full fledged, 100%. I'm taking your ass down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna urlacker you as hard as you've ever been urlackered before, and you get taken down. And that's the one thing about our Rondori that is way beyond light years ahead of the Aikikai Rondori is that when you do this style Rondori, everybody gets taken down. Doesn't matter who you are. I've seen Vernosa, I've seen video footage of Vernosa get taken down. Everyone goes down. The thing is, we accept the fact that we're going to go down. We already know we're going down. One way or another, you're going down. The difference is, it's the way you get back up. And when you get taken down in a Rondori and you got three guys pounded on you and you're on the ground and you can't give up and you stop and you give up, you know what that means in the real world? It means you just died. So the moral behind this type of training is to never give up, never surrender, ever. No matter how hard you get taken down on the ground, doesn't matter how many people are on top of you, you keep fighting to get up. You don't ever stop, ever. Because if you can handle that for 15 seconds, 15 seconds, that's it. And 15 seconds seems like a lifetime when you're on the receiving end of a beat down Ron Dory. It seems like a fucking eternity. Like the clock is going backwards. If you can handle 15 seconds in a beat down Ron Dory, how do you think you're going to handle somebody on the street, especially if you're able to get up? Because you don't stop. You don't ever quit. Quitting is not an option. 
ever. You get up from a beat down Rondori, how do you think you're going to handle somebody out on the street? And this is a regular practice in Tension Aikido, is beat down Rondori. It's regular practice. It happens every day. Every single day it happens. You train yourself to condition yourself to be able to do this. You go out on the street and you have two people attacking you. You're going to be like painting your nails, waiting for the next guy to come at you. Because you're going to handle the situation better than anybody's ever handled it. You're going to fear no man at that point. And the thing is, like I said, compliant partners. You're not going to have that on the street. But the principles of movement, the dayashi, the initial movement, cutting your angles, lining up the attackers as they're coming at you. It's that movement, that ashi sabaki, that footwork, that's going to keep your ass from being taken down to the ground. Obviously, when the opportunity presents itself, you blast them. There's a method behind this madness. There really is. And I hope all of you can see the purpose behind this video. The third video, the second video, the first video. I apologize that it's taken a year for me to make this. Okay? But we did it. It's done. And like I said, we're going to create a 10 plus video platform on the online classes that are going to go into this even more detailed. Even more detailed. You're going to see a lot of other stuff, plus the historical footage that I'm going to upload on it. It's going to be awesome. So, that being said, like the video, hit that thumbs up, share the video, subscribe. Please subscribe. Make us grow. I want to share this with everybody. Grow the Road Warrior channel. Special thanks to Chris Looper. Hi, Omenigashu. We will see you on the next video. And I don't know, maybe it's going to be a PPF, past, present, future. I think that might be the next one. I still know the one that I want to do, the one that I said the last time, I still want to do that one. That would be an awesome video to do. You might see some Kenjutsu stuff, you might see some other stuff as well, but that just might be the one that I'm going to do. Our website is www.roadwarriorstraining.com. Click on Slides Combatives, check it out. Check out our Facebook page, Road Warriors Combative Concepts. My public image page, Road Warrior Lenny Sly. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.